Another day and another dead body with a connection that cannot be ignored as Hillary Clinton's body count seems to be on the rise once again, after a brief reprieve of no sudden, mysterious casualties. The latest is possibly the most shocking yet in the truly startling trail of dead bodies that keep accumulating around this crooked woman with major secrets she's desperate to keep hidden no matter who has she has to off to ensure it. It didn't take long for her latest victim to be found dead in his pricey New York City apartment by his 11-year-old daughter who discovered his death that strangely been ruled a suicide even though how it happened suggests otherwise. In what's being reported as a famous surgeon to the star's unexpected suicide brought on by stress the timing of his death after what he just exposed of Hillary's cannot be ignored. Why would a wealthy, acclaimed trauma surgeon with three young daughters himself in a particularly gruesome manner in his home were not the only one asking this very important question? The way he died would have been particularly difficult to do to himself. Furthermore, when his daughter found him and called for help, she reported it as an assault, a fact that Democrats are desperate to hide. The New York Daily News reports, investigators were treating the death of Dr. Dean Larique as an apparent suicide, sources said. He was under some personal stress, a police source said. The surgeon was home with his daughter, police said, adding, there were no signs of forced entry at the Tony Upper East Side apartment at Park Avenue and E96 Street. The girl alerted the building's doorman, who called 911. Police said the call was regarding an assault. Cops found the 54-year-old doctor's body in the bathroom around 1 p.m. The knife was near his heart, a source said. Lorik's wife was playing tennis at the time, police said. Lorik, a father of three girls, was the associate director of the orthopedic trauma service at the hospital for special surgery. He was also a professor at Weill Cornell Medical College. Although he's known for his many accomplishments in treating notable figures like U2's Bono and was also on a team of doctors who helped NYPD officer Taro Lee recover after an SUV plowed him over, his alleged connection to the Clintons has just surfaced. Neon Nettle reports, one of the United States' leading surgeons, who exposed misappropriation of funds by the Clinton Foundation in Haiti, has been found dead after being stabbed in the tour so. Dr. Dean Larique was found on the bathroom floor of his New York apartment by his 11-year-old daughter with a knife still stuck in his chest at around 1 p.m. on Monday. Those who follow WikiLeaks and have investigated Hillary Clinton's emails may recognize Dr. Dean Larique's name already. In 2010, Lorik was part of a relief effort that flew to Haiti as a volunteer to offer his SS for civilians who had been injured during the earthquakes that devastated the region. Within 24 hours of the earthquake, a 13-member team of surgeons, anesthesiologists, and operating room nurses was assembled with a massive amount of orthopedic operating room equipment and flew to Port-au-Prince with Dr. Lorik. Bill and Hillary Clinton's charitable Clinton Foundation led the relief effort in Haiti raising millions of dollars from around the world to help the people recover from the natural disaster. Sadly, most of the funds never reached the people of Haiti, but instead, lined the pockets of the Clinton's associates who were meant to redevelop the nation, but never delivered. Dr. Larique and his team were there to help save the limbs of those injured, which without the proper medical treatment, would have meant amputation for a lot of people. Lorik described amputation in those conditions as a death sentence and hoped to treat as many sufferers as possible, saying, We expected many amputations. But we thought we could save limbs that were salvageable, particularly those of children. We recognized that in an underdeveloped country, a limb amputation may be a death sentence. It does not have to be so. With the amount of money that was being donated to Haiti for the victims, Lorik and his team expected to have support when their plane touched down. Instead, he described the situation as shameful and witnessed, firsthand, a huge misappropriation of funds, with the people affected by the disaster receiving no help whatsoever. Dr. Lorick was disgusted by what he saw and sent an email to then-Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's Chief of Staff Cheryl D. Mills to report what he had seen. The email was forwarded to Hillary Clinton which meant it then found its way into WikiLeaks' possession and can be read here. Unsatisfied with the lack of response from Clinton's people, despite the fact that they had clearly read his email, Lorik wrote an article for CNN that exposed what he found when he arrived in Haiti. We found scores of patients with pus dripping out of open extremity fractures and crush injuries, reported Lorik. Some wounds were already ridden with maggots. About a third of these victims were children. The entire hospital smelled of infected, rotting limbs and death. Later on, we would judge our surgical progress by the diminishment of the stench. As we got up and running and organized the patients for surgery, we told our contacts in the United States, the Clintons, what we needed. Unfortunately, that help never arrived. 
We left feeling as if we abandoned these patients, the country, and its people, and we feel terrible, said Laura, adding, upon our departure, we witnessed pallets of Cheerios and dry goods sitting on the tarmac helping nobody. Yet our flight of critical medical equipment and personnel had been cancelled. Our role back in New York is to expose the inadequacies of the system in the hopes of affecting change immediately. Dr. Larique's reports on Haiti shone a huge spotlight on the level of corruption that was taking place in Haiti while Bill and Hillary Clinton reaped the praise as the faces of the relief effort. Hillary Clinton never seems to be able to escape scandal and as long as she is a free woman, rather than being locked up where she belongs, she will be continued to be questioned in everything that she has any kind of connection to. From the web-powered by Zergnet Awkward Olympics wardrobe malfunctions you can't unsee the real reason you don't hear about Leanne Rimes anymore this figure skating move was too provocative for the Olympics here's what you didn't know about Megyn Kelly the truth about Chip Gaines here's who Jackie Kennedy thought had her husband killed.